Hi. Okay. Um, my name is Vince White, and I am the gentleman who uh, created the Legend of Willpower and the Powerverse. Um, I I launched the Powerverse in February of 2017, like February 17th or something like that. And it was with the powers that be. Okay, it was a compilation title of multiple characters uh, whom I thought were iconic in the in the indie indie scene. Uh, they were mostly characters of color. Uh, I thought that 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 spotlight needed to be shined on some of these characters and and, and characters in general. Some of the independent creators and titles in general. Uh, the Kickstarter was very successful. Um, the moment I launched that Kickstarter, <laughs> it's so crazy, God, I didn't know if it was fate or not, but uh, I was released from my job. Uh, um, but I, I saw that as a positive because I said, hey, this is great. You know, maybe I can focus on this. The Kickstarter, at least in the Kickstarter sense, it got over $7,000 or something like that. I think we probably pulled in like 6,500 or 62 or something like that at, because some of the pledges fell through or whatever. But so many people liked the idea of having an indie comic that was as polished or presented in the professional manner that I tried to present the powers that be and the powerverse that uh, many people wanted to join. Um, I had a few people who were working with me at that time, uh, Rodney, uh, Jenna Tim, uh, Rodney, if I can't say your name right, I apologize. Uh, Nigel Flood was someone that was uh, with me as well. Um, I was carrying his book, The Globalist, on my store. And we, I put the Powerverse logo on it. Um, I was helping Rodney with a book called Blue Jay, and uh, well, from from there we had uh, many people asked to join, and uh, we were trying to accommodate them. So before I knew it, I tried to organize this ragtag group because it was just really me, okay? <laughs> and you know, I, the relationship that with Nigel and Rodney were, you know, just sort of. Uh, so we, we were associates that were aligned and we talked we, we didn't talk a lot maybe with Rodney I talked a lot but it was you know it was something very simple but uh, from what I from there it just it just exploded and Nigel kept calling me and saying hey I got this person who wants to join I got this person who wants to join and I was okay okay uh, um, tell me what they got we had people that had no concepts, you know, people that had just drawings in crayon, literally. And uh, I dropped everything I had to try and cultivate the stories. I wrote scripts. I broke down characters. I created logos. I tried to, uh, I showed them my tricks to how I created things. I shared my icon equation with them. I fleshed out the universe and showed them uh, my cosmology, and uh, it took some it took some time. You know, I tried to organize the group, created a Facebook page, a private one, a private chat. Um, I read scripts, edit we edit scripts, we rewrote scripts, we created brand new scripts for some, uh, and. Many people were in line trying to become, become, you know, get their book out in the Powerverse, and uh, I was like, "Look, well, I don't, you know, I'm, I don't have any money to produce these books. I mean, but they liked what I was packaging, so we started doing Kickstarters, and I would run their Kickstarter. Basically, I would get on, I would design their Kickstarter, I would design some of the art, design the background piece, everything." Um, while my K 
Kickstarter was going on, or, or slightly thereafter, I got a call from an old friend of mine, and uh, we ended up on a pod. He had he had ran a podcast, and so I he invited me on the podcast. I came on the podcast, and we were talking, and I got a call, a call in. I guess he said, "Hey, someone's going to join us on the podcast." I said, "Who's that?" <laughs> He said, man, this is a guy named Sean Mack. I said, oh, Sean Mack, okay, I don't know who Sean is. So he gets on, he says, hey, brother, man, what's up? Hey, he says, hey. Well, actually, I didn't know what Sean was. I didn't know what nationality Sean was at all. But uh, he said, hi, how you doing? We started talking, and he was breaking down the powers. So I was like, what? Hey, he knew my numbers and everything. I was like, oh, what? What's... I said, uh, man, I, I don't know who you are. I'm sorry to, you know, that you got me at a disadvantage because I don't know who you are. He was like, yeah, I'm paying big attention to what you got going on over there. I'm paying a lot of attention to what you got going on. So afterwards, I talked to him after the podcast. I said, hey, well, I'm just trying to get the guys together. I feel like we're stronger together. And, you know, we have just as much muster as anyone in the business, you know. It's just that we're Indian. We don't package ourselves, you know, uh, with the same uh, professional uh, finish and so forth. And, but that's my forte, you know, packaging and things like that, and design, and you know, uh, uh, I create. Uh, yeah, I, I think I try to create a, a good a good platform and a concept, you know, uh, a connected indie indieverse, basically. So he was sort of reluctant to come on to the power verse, I guess, because he was saying, "Well, you know, I don't know about the power verse because." You know, it's it's got willpower in it, and it, it sort of you know illustrates you a little too much. And I was like, oh well, I would have it that way. It's just that his story explains how all these multiverses can come together, and how I had it set up was that uh, my matter density wave that changed the density of all matter, which gave willpower his unpowers spread out through the multiverse and thin the barriers between all realities. And so the books still had their own realities. But now you could sort of, the other the realities were sort of able to detect one another. And they just started slowly develop technology to allow them to go between realities. And I was doing something like a no strings attached contract, sort of like a lot of indie guys are sort of Reluctant to work with other indie guys because you know that we just we feel like we're going to get burned or whatever. And so I wanted these guys to feel really secure in knowing that hey, I'm not trying to take your product or anything like that. I'm not trying to take advantage of you either. So this is no strings attached. You know, <clears throat> if you want to leave, you can go anytime and. <clears throat> By having separate realities, you can leave and keep your reality intact, right? You can say, oh, well, yo, I, I remember that time our reality became merged with the power verse and now that gate closed or whatever, right? And it doesn't affect your storyline or anything, you're, you're, nothing, right? So that's why I was set up that way. But uh, We had so many people in the pipeline, so many people that wanted, hey, where's my book going to come out? Where's my book going to come out? Uh, that I started doing something called dual Kickstarters. Two books in a campaign because people just would not wait. They did not want to wait. And uh, every time I turned around, Nigel had some more people that, you know, uh, wanted to be a part of the Powerverse. So I was, okay, okay, let me see if I can accommodate them. Let me see if I can design a logo. Let me see if I can do a cover for them. Let me see if we can look at their script. Let's try to get their script edited. Let's let's design a Kickstarter. Let's put them on a schedule. Let's, you know, it was a full-time gig. When I ran the Kickstarters, I was constantly working, sending things out. I was doing advertising campaigns. I was on the phone with people. I was online with people. You know, I was doing podcasts. I was doing, creating their videos. I was doing, you know, adding the music. I was creating the website. I was updating the website. I was doing everything, you know. Was, and uh, the deal was that uh, I was going to get 15% of any sales we made. And that sort of 
dribbled over to the Kickstarters because they said, well, what, what are you going to do about the Kickstarters? I said, well, I guess I'll just keep it 15% as well. I wasn't trying to take 50 or 40 or 30 or 20. I just said, let's just be 15%. You know, and I was trying to be altruistic. I wanted us to all feel like uh, we were working towards a common goal and no one was getting taken advantage of. So, Blackout concluded, I mean, uh, Powers That Be concluded, Blackout came out next as a Kickstarter. That was Roosevelt Pitt. Roosevelt Pitt's been in the game for a long time. This guy is a, a vet, he's a vet uh, of this industry. Uh, I respect what he did for uh, comics back in the 90s and black comics and black characters in the 90s. And uh, he was sort of someone that I've always looked up to. I was a fan of his when I was younger, and I was still a fan of Purge and his character, uh, all his other characters that he had uh, in the past. So uh, I helped him with his Kickstarter. We ground that Kickstarter and made it, got it over goal. And uh, I think the next thing we worked on was like American Dreams, and marvelous. Then the next one was Chest and Cerberus. And we had a snafu of where the guy I was talking about, the podcast guy, he starts riffing on the Powerverse, saying, Oh, the Powerverse is. He's. And the Powerverse is. Uh, he has people without copyrights and stuff like that. And he's not helping people. We were all creator old. It, was, it, was less, it wasn't a business organization per se as much as a consortium a collected effort of indie artists and i was extending myself as far as i could to help these guys and try to organize them and so forth so you say the power verse not uh, copyright people's stuff and they're not uh they're not he's, he's just taking money to eat now granted uh there's a lot of a lot of publishers out there are taking way more than 15%. 50% is nothing. There. Like every dollar you get, I'm I'll I'll only getting 15 cents. You can make $100, I would get $15. Okay. You can get a, uh, you can break $4,000, almost $5,000 in a Kickstarter. I might get $400. Okay. This is after a, a month or two running the Kickstarter, designing the Kickstarter, designing the the, the video, uh, promoting it, uh, and putting ads and everything out. Right at the end of the day, I might get four hundred dollars, and uh, uh, that's what I was living off of, literally, <laughs> literally, because I I was let go from my job. So, uh, this continued, uh, we had a couple other people want to join, uh, Marcel came over with POM, we ran his Kickstarter, we got that over, uh, another gentleman had Victoria Black and his Kickstarter, he was supposed to be with the Power Versus, he launched his Kickstarter without us and then it was in trouble, we got that over. Uh, I did a Vegas Baby Kickstarter. This is what Nigel sort of let me know. Okay, where are we going to do a globalist Kickstarter? And I was like, oh, well, well, I didn't know that you wanted to do a Kickstarter. I, you know, because you were self-sufficient. I already saw you do your first uh, book. You, know, you paid for it himself. And I thought I saw him working on some of the pages. He was getting some of the pages done. And he was just paying for it himself. So I, said, I didn't know you wanted to do it. Um, you know, like myself and a couple other guys, we were just kind of working on our stuff slowly in the background. But I said, yeah, I can get it. I'll get it done. Let me, uh, by this time, it's like Christmas. But I said, I don't really want to do it over Christmas because, you know, people want to buy their kids and families Christmas presents. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but he was insistent that, that he, he'd have a Kickstarter. So I said, okay, let's do it. What's going to happen is, we're going to start this thing in December or late November. 
I'm going to not promote it during Christmas. It's going to take a lull during Christmas. And then in the new year, I'm going to get right back on it and I'm going to push it over. Okay. So as the Kickstarter was progressing, it slowed down during the Christmas time and New Year's, just like I told him it would. Uh, I remember him calling, uh, and he wanted to talk to me. He kept saying he doesn't feel like he's getting the love from Poverty because his Kickstarter is at a standstill. I kept telling him that's that's the plan. It's going to be at a standstill. I I made your Kickstarter forty five damn forty six days because of this. Uh, we used to keep saying, oh, I don't feel like I'm getting the love from, from uh, the power verse. Oh, oh, let me go back. Let me go back. <laughs> okay. Back where that, that podcast guy was talking about the power verse, right? He basically was picking on this, the, the one of the creators. The creator had, um, he had a, he, he had a, uh, uh, you might say like a, 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 a mild, intellectual disability okay you, you might you couldn't tell if you spoke to him it's just that his his answers would be very analytical uh, and maybe he, he would fill you in and you felt like you didn't get enough information I don't know but this podcast guy just ripped him a new one recorded his uh, interview and then played it to bits and pieces and so I got back at this guy I did a rap <laughs> or I cussed this guy out because I told him, I said, this guy has intellectual disability, why are you picking on him? Uh, you know, you're, you're really destroying this guy. And this guy, uh, one of our creators, he went into exile. He basically left the group. He, he, he fell into deep depression. He could not finish his book. We were worried about him. You know, we didn't know what he was going to do. Uh, and then I get a call, and the call is from Sean Matt. Sean is on the phone with this podcast guy, or no, he's on the phone by himself. I say, so he say, hey, why did you put that thing up about you know this podcast guy? That's because he's picking on this this guy, and uh, it, I told him this guy has an intellectual disability. And he's like, well, I think it's wrong, man. I'm out, you know, I think you should take it down because the podcast guy, you know, he really wants to take it down. So how do you, how do you know about this podcast guy? I mean, why are you defending him? I'm telling you what he did. And I'm telling you, that's why I came back right about this rap that I put up, this crazy rap. Don't you think if your children or someone you do have an intellectual disability and someone just starts picking on them on social media, you would be upset about it? You would, you know, clap back at him just like they, he did. Well, I think you should take what you have down. I don't think. I was like, why are you defending him? And why? Who? How did you get involved in this? <laughs> this is what I'm trying to figure. Out. How did you get involved in this? <laughs> all right. So, and I, and then I kept wondering, well, how, where did this podcast guy get all this information about what I had, how much I made for Kickstarters? And I was trying to figure this out. Like, how did how did the podcast guy have all this, it wasn't real information, but it, it sounded like disgruntled information, right? So I was like, where did he get all this information from? And why is Sean, the same guy that broke into my podcast, and, you know, and wanted to be on the same podcast and be calling me, talking about this this guy? Okay, so, you know, calling me up, talking to me about this guy. I'm trying to figure out, well, what's going on? You know, to jump back to the whole uh, Nigel thing and his globalist title, you know, he was upset about it. Or, and I was like, no, dude, don't worry about it. It's going to make it. It's going to make it. Right after Christmas and New Year's, it's going to make it. So I said, uh, all right, the New Year's come. Let's get your Kickstarter over the, over the goal line. So uh, we're going to inject some more energy into it. And... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna come up with an alternate cover. So I said, you know, we should get a, an artist that's pretty cool. And, <clears throat> and since I knew Keith Jones, I, I said, hey, Keith would be the one to put it on it. 
I hit Keith it up. I said, hey, Keith, could you, you know, could you do me a favor? You think you could do some, a cover for us? And he gave me a price, like his number. And I went back. I told Nigel. He said, well, Nigel said, well, I don't think I can afford it right now. I said, don't worry about it. I'll I'll pay him. At least I'll pay him in a half. And then, you know, and when the Kickstarter is over, we can get the rest or whatever. Maybe you could pay him the rest. I was just like, okay, so I got Keith in to work on it, gave him the money, worked on it. Uh, cover was amazing. It's the globalist cover, awesome, beautiful stuff, okay? Uh, it boom, the Kickstarter boom. I was telling Nigel to put up post pictures of his characters, and uh, he, he didn't want to do it at first, but then he started doing it, and that worked. Uh, more people chimed in, and, you know, uh, they wanted to back. That was the first Kickstarter that I did animation on. So I actually started off with a, a news lady animating. Uh, she was speaking. And I wrote the whole dialogue for it. I came up with the look and feel. I clarified what his title was to the reader. It was a really cool little premise, right? He made it. Um, then we were waiting for the buddies to come in. And uh, I think we did. At that time, we did Victoria Black, and we got Victoria Black through and everything else. All right, so we're approaching a year. <clears throat> we're approaching a year because we started. I started in February. Now it's January, March, or January. So I said, okay, January, February, March. So I said, it's in January. I said, okay, now uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get this. Uh, our book's out because Blackout, I was waiting for Blackout. Everyone kept saying, well, I got a book that's done. Can I put it out? I said, well, no. I want to wait till Roosevelt's book gets out because I don't want I put it, I don't want any book to come out out of order. I don't want his book to look like it's late compared to anyone else's because Roosevelt has bad artists over there, the Zong Brothers. I was doing a lettering for it as well as doing other things. It, it was beautiful. But the book was taking some time. Okay, we had other artists involved. Uh, they did some of the promo work. We had Larry Strowman on there, and Machindo Kuba, he was on there. Some of Machindo was doing some work elsewhere. We had to wait for his schedule to clear up. Uh, Larry got his things in, and then we had to we had some color issues. We straightened it out. But anyway, his book took a year to produce, and. Uh, I released The Powers That Be in digital format, and then I released it in print. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't realize that you could check off who you sent things to on the Kickstarter. I didn't know that. So as I was sending the books out, I, I sent them out through Indie Planet. So I would I basically uh, type in the person's address, I pay for it, send it. Each transaction takes about two, three minutes. All right, so I might do ten or twenty a day when I, you know, uh, when I had the time or whatever. I I'll do ten or twenty, and uh, I'll come back the next day to the list where I thought I left off. Then I'll go back to Indie Planet. I try to figure out where if they have any receipts for me or like my email. What did I send? Who did I send it to? So in that process, I may have missed some people, but it may have been like ten or ten or so people. Some of those people chimed and said, "Hey, I didn't get my book." I said, "Oh." So as I as soon as they chimed in and Rodney saw them or whatever, we sent them their book. So I sent out the powers that be, which was the first thing, the whole thing to launch the whole powerverse. Then. Um, <clears throat> Blackout finally got done, so I released Blackout, uh, and I drew a connecting tissue in the back of the powers that be to Blackout. So with the other guys, I said, hey, it's time to release your books, Blackout's out, let me do some intros and I'll tie all these things together, and I'll show you how the universe, I'll show the reader how the universe will come together. Um, During that time, uh, something happened where I had to relocate and so from my home 
when I moved, I was without internet for a while, for like like a week, like consistent internet, you know. <clears throat> During that time, we were doing a Kickstarter for a grill, and it was stopped. So I was trying to figure out what's going on. Um, we restarted it. It started going well. We did another a different profile. I started a different profile. It, it was doing well. Because uh, I wrote back to Kickstarter trying to figure out what's going on, but they didn't. They, they sent me like a form letter didn't answer anything for me, so I didn't understand what was wrong. Uh, so, by this time I'm working on the intros for for all the books. Okay, so the guys that, that had their books ready, they were like, oh man, can we just hurry up with these intros so we can get our books out? Because I got people telling me, I tell, I, I, I got, we've got people who want our books from our Kickstarter because it's been a year. Okay. So, uh, I would say tell them that we're just working on some final things. We'll get it done. We got I got the art done by March. Was a, I said March fifth. I think I got the art in by March seventh. I sent it off to the kicks. I sent it off to Kablam so I could get the prints, the first prints back. Uh, because once it's in Kablam and on Indie Planet and stuff, I sent them out. So uh, we noticed that the Detective Grimm got shut down again. We did it again under his uh, name, under his profile. It got shut down again. I wrote to K Kickstarter. I said, "Why is why are these books getting shut down? I, you know, these if it's for fulfillment, these creators are not me. They are separate creators with their own titles. Uh, that's what the power verse is. If you're saying that I haven't delivered something." Uh, it's not them that haven't delivered anything, you know, if that's the problem. it's They're all individual people, but it didn't work. Every time we started this Kickstarter, it kept getting shut down <clears throat> under his profile, under a new profile, under a, another my profile. They're like, why is this getting shut down? And I started seeing chats in, the, in our group chat. People were complaining and bickering and I always, always bicker about why does it take us so long? Why does it take us so long? Uh, now, granted, I finished up all the intros. We released all the books digitally, and I sent them to Kablam to get the physical prints so I can start to get them back. We got the physical prints in. I sent the pictures out to everybody. Uh, so, okay, now we're gonna start sending these books out, and that's when I get the notification that. Uh, Nigel said he's he's gone. I said he's gone. Oh, okay, wow, all right. So he left. Then I got notification that American Dreams left. Daniel said he left, and then Paige called me. The brother, he was like, "Hey man, I just want to talk to you face to face." You know, he did a face call. He's like, you know, Nigel's been hitting me up for the last four or five months about this and. You know, I'm just wondering, you know, should I go? By that time, I was I was so hurt because I put so much work into all of it, right? To hear these people leave just be, just as I got the books finished and ready to go out. I said, yeah, you know, maybe it's the best thing if, if you go. You can go if you're going to go, Paige. He said, all right. That's at least he, he called me. He said, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. At least talk to you. So he left. And... Uh, so we, I'm sitting there trying to figure out, wow, what just happened to me? What just happened to me? And as I slowly put things together, I realized that over the year, as I talked to Nigel, uh, he was talking to Sean. Because he would say, so, you know, Sean said that too. I said, Sean, who? Sean Mack? He said, yeah. I said, how you know Sean Mack? said, oh, well, I was talking to him here and there. And Sean Mack runs short fuse. And uh, I said, okay, so that's just strange. You're talking about short fuse so much. And then I found out that Nigel went to short fuse and that he had posted some things. How many people did I bring here anyway on the, on the ch on our chat? How many people did I bring to the Powerverse? 
I was like, why is that's an odd thing to the post? See, the complaint was uh, in, inside the group was that there were so many people that no one could talk to me. So I got assistant editors, editors, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I had advocates that would talk to all these guys, try to organize things, because I was so busy. Not only did I have to talk to them, but I have, like, just fan mail. I would get at least 80 to 90 IM messages a day. Your messages would get buried into it, so I just, I can't contact everyone else. I had to delegate, you know. That wasn't good enough for a lot of people. They kept complaining, and they could not talk to me. Like, they needed me in order for them to do their book. And uh, although I tried to spread myself out, I tried to do something good, uh, I just wasn't getting the love, respect, or just the camaraderie that I thought was going to come from it, right? And as I started to think about this, I was like, wait a second, you know, Shaw's, I mean, Nigel's always talking to Shaw. Nigel leaves to short fuse. Someone's told me that they've been, Nigel's been talking to them for four or five months about leaving. For this new, th and, and I see this announcement called alignment, like, you know, so many months before, right? And then the Kickstarters kept getting shut down, like Kickstarters getting it no notified that these books were being launched and that there was no fulfillment of these books for some reason. That's what they were that's what they were telling them. So so the Kickstarter should be shut down outside of my name. So somebody was actually calling Kickstarter and anything that had power verse on it, they were shutting it down. They were they were reporting it so it would be shut down. Because it would start and it would run. It would get approved by Kickstarter. It would run. It would be halfway towards the goal. It would get shut down. So amongst the complaints of people not being able to talk to me was now the Kickstarters weren't meeting and then Nigel leaves and then very soon every a few other people leave with him and then the next thing I know is that they're going over to Short Fuse. Now there's something called the Hegelian, Hegelian dialectic, I think that's what it is. It's a Machiavellian type of maneuver where, let's say, a government creates, you know, they want they want to gain power, so they'll create a problem, right, that will stun people, cause a lot of chaos. Then they'll blame it on something else. Then they'll come through with the solution do the problem, <clears throat> but that solution ultimately gets them more control. And what I realized was that somebody in my camp was telling Kickstarter that people weren't receiving anything. And they were shutting down the Kickstarters to cause chaos inside the group. And then, maybe those people came with the solution. Well, hey, come on over here, because we can fulfill your books instantly. Now, I was just about to fulfill their books. <laughs> the videos are on my page of the books coming in. Just as they came in, I showed them, everyone's gone. And everyone, well, not everyone, but the, the, the books that we had left, left. Now, I just want to say this, you know. Uh, if for my Kickstarter, uh, the powers that be, you know, we... Let me just say this. I just want to say this. In a year, we put out the powers that be, Blackout, uh American Dreams, Chess, Marvelous, Victoria Black, We Help With Vegas Baby, 
the glo and the globalists at POM. We hit all our goals. We released in print the powers that be, POM, Victoria Black, oh, Swag Patrol, you throw Swag Patrol in there. We released Swag Patrol, even though we didn't do a Kickstarter for it, but we released Swag Patrol. Ten titles in a year as an indie company. We did it from scratch within that year. Some people take a year to do one book. We did ten books in that year, which I think is a great time. And at the end of the year, we were about to distribute them physically. So you, you invested, you waited a year, and now you're going to get the product, right? And these guys leave on this uh, premise, well, we can fulfill you. I don't understand what they're talking about. Fulfill your, book, fulfill your book instantly. They left a while ago. I don't know where the books are now. But they their books would have already been out to fans. Uh, in, in March. April. April. That's already May now. They've been out. They've been out in March and April. End of March and April. Uh, it already been out to the fans. Now we released prints of those books. I released all those books digitally. Not only did we create them all, uh, we released them all digitally, so the readers knew that they the books were actually made. We released uh, uh, most of those in print. The only books that we hadn't released yet were American Dreams. Uh, chess and the globalist. Uh, the globalist got his funds to release them too. Here's the other thing: is that uh, Nigel lived overseas, so I couldn't transfer money into his account. We realized that when the Kickstarter came in, once it was over. So. I tried to send him five hundred dollars. I sent five hundred dollars to his artist, and then I tried to send him some of that money uh, out of my account each day. But I only had a certain limit. So if I sent him uh, five hundred dollars or so, I couldn't take out anything from from my account for the rest of the day. So I said, well, hey, we got to send this over time so that I can have money and do things. You can So let me send you like two or three hundred dollars, you know, a day. Um, we did that for a while. And then uh, something happened where I said, hey, you know what, man? Um, let me send you the rest. Uh, I sent him two thousand. He was supposed to get three thousand dollars or something. I said to him like twenty five hundred dollars or something like twenty two thousand some odd dollars or fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred bucks. I said, let me send you the rest uh, on every Friday. I will send you a hundred dollars. I'm gonna send you four hundred dollars a month till I get you paid off because something came up. And his money got shifted. Something bad. It was something that I wrote that came through. So I said, "Well, let me just send you a hundred dollars every uh, Friday. It'll amount to four hundred dollars a month. We already got your artist paid. We got everything else paid." So that's what I was doing. And uh, um, I guess he was upset about that. That he had to wait to receive his cash, uh, the remaining of his, the remainder of his cash. And I was just saying, hey, man, you know, you're getting it. Don't worry about not receiving it. And then he leaves in the middle. He asked me for everything. Uh, all like his covers, his logo, all the logos I made for him, alternative logos. Anything I ever made for him, he asked for it. And then he tells me he's gone. Um, and now I see what Short Fuse wrote here. And this is why I'm making this video is that they wrote something like uh, that I did not 
produce something and therefore um, I've discredited indie comics but that's not true <laughs> I told you the story the real story uh, yeah here it is Globalist, American Dreams, and Chest are three comic books that previous publish publishers promoted and promised fans via multiple successful Kickstarter campaigns, but ultimately failed to deliver, making the entire indie comic community look bad to a number of supportive fans. Shortfuse Media, media is re something this rectify or rectify the situation. For the creators of those books, as well as the fans that were taken advantage of by printing and releasing these books. Okay. June 15th. June, July. So, what are we? Where are we? Our March, April, May. Uh, so, we're in June now. Yeah, June. Okay. That's, this is why I'm doing this video, so the truth can come out. Uh, at least my side of the truth, right? Um, you saw what, well, you heard the story. Uh, by the time we were ready to release them, they were gone. Uh, we released all the digital products and uh, we released some of the, some of the, most of the books in print. Those three titles, uh, were about to go out in print. They had already went out digital, and they just left. Now, uh, it was funny that people complained about not being able to contact me, but it was the same people that brought all these people in that exploded the power verse that made it impossible for me to talk to them. You know. Uh, and then we're not able to speak to these people themselves as I place, basically Nigel brought all these people into the power first and I tried to set up uh, editors to speak with them Nigel was one and uh, if these, if, if those people felt like I wasn't able to speak to them like American Dreams I, mean, I freaking, we rewrote we almost rewrote the whole character for American Dreams, I, you know, gave them the motivation and everything. Uh, it's, you know, that, that was a Bob logo that we created. Everything about it was, it was beautiful. But uh, it is not as they are portraying it. And the, the fans that purchased those uh, projects received the digital products. They were going to receive everything else, but uh, this is just something that I've seen happen, especially with the short fuse model, is that they take products that have been created, they run a Kickstarter for it for themselves, and it's just for them to generate revenue off of it, not to actually get to create the uh, product created. We were actually creating a universe from the ground up. It's sad to see this happen, especially from Sean back a brother to another brother. The whole idea about the Powerverse initially was to uh, promote black creators and their characters and to see someone undermine someone like that uh, from the inside is, uh, it's sad to see. Uh, I had an incident with Sean where a gentleman left the creator of Red Knight, and Red Knight, what he left early because of uh, I had done a book called Flat, and uh, it was like a flat Earth thing. I was doing a flat Earth book. And he was so upset that I was uh, involved with the flat Earth thing. He wanted to leave. He broke up our comic book group and everything. And I'm gone, and. Then he wanted to not have this character associated with the power force. He never really left, but he didn't want to join. Let's put it that way. So he joined Short Fuse. And then Sean calls me up 
one day say, hey, man, I got, I got something for you, man. Why don't we do a, a, a book we can cross over? We can do a, a short fuse power verse book. I said, what's, what's the book? Yeah, oh, it's Red Knight. It's Red Knight. Yeah, Red Knight. Oh, well, I don't think that's going to work out because uh, that creator doesn't really want to associate with me because I do, you know, the Flat Earth thing. I did the Flat Earth book. He said, well, I don't care. He signed a five-year contract. He can't, I got his whole catalog. He, he can't, I put him where I tell him I'm going to put him. And if you go come on as one of our publishers, that's where I'm going to put him. He can't say nothing about it. And I was like, wow. You know, in a private conversation, we were talking, Sean and I, and, and we were talking about rap because we like rap and stuff. And uh, we were talking about Jay-Z and uh, D Damian Dash and, you know, Jay-Z sort of did Damien Dash wrong, you know. Damien created Rockefeller, con the Rockefeller name, the concept, all that stuff. And he cultivated Jay-Z. And then they were going to do a deal with uh, a, uh, a studio. I forget what it's called. I think it picked them up. But uh, Damien said, well, let us go think about it. That's, that's not a sweet enough deal. But then Jay-Z went back behind his back, signed the deal, took the name, and kicked Damian Dash out of the deal. And I was, we were talking about that, Sean and I, I was talking about how dirty that was. He was like, yeah, but I'd rather be Jay-Z than uh, Damian Dash any day, because uh, that's what you got to do. And I was like, what? And that day, that was like right after the interview thing, where we, after we first met, we started talking a little bit. I just thought that that was very cutthroat and cutthroat towards, you know, another brother. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, uh, that whole short fuse thing over there is, uh, is tainted water, water. You know, we, we try, we want to create great titles and great concepts and we or we want to see that in comics and we always get disappointed because the companies put out this product that is so industry driven right that they never tap into the real essence of what we want as fans right and that's what we got pissed off with Marvel and so forth other movies have been great but you know them doing these events and events and things like that. We, you know, we, we're like, gosh, you know, they're just driven by the dollar and not by the love of comics. And uh, that's what I see developing there. And if anyone that's willing to sell their, sell their soul to that, you know, for five years, uh, where they're taking a way more than 15%, uh, and who, who, don't care about you or what's going to happen to you. I think you are then contributing to the problem because what we really want in the indie world is uh, is some type of community, people that actually love comics, right? Not just not just not just the numbers, but the actual experience and the actual creation of mythology and heroes and legends and getting that out there and having uh, people fall in love with it. So, uh, to this internal coup uh, that I uh, see has happened, uh, it seems that, uh, you know, I, this time I, I got I got played because I was, I was too naive and too giving and didn't realize who I had surrounded me and the type of people and the type of dedication they had to the vision that, that I spread myself thin for. I literally put my stuff on the back burner to make their dreams come true. And uh, it was, it's uh, very sad to say. So no, the, the comment that they wrote is not correct. That we were, it's not that we were not trying to fulfill it. We were fulfill it. We were fulfilling it at our pace. And I was on the verge of fulfilling the print uh, rewards and they're gone. So I mean, if you know me, uh, 
you know that I will try. It's hard for me to say no to anyone. If you want my help, I try to give it to you. I work off of, you know, I produce it when I can or how I can. And I'm constantly doing something and trying to put something out bit by bit, piece by piece, until it's done. Um, it's about having that willpower. So uh, I don't appreciate the untruth that's written here. And, uh, I, uh, I, I just wanted to clarify and clear the air. So that's it. That's me for now. Vince White, Powerverse it has a die, baby. Stay tuned. Until next time, be powerful.